Okay, we'll call the 22nd regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Berg? Here. Bonnet? Here. Doyle? Here. Graf? Excused. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Excused. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Stefan? Excused. Van Akron? Here. Vanderwill? Here. Wangeman? Here. Warner? Here. Weninger? Here. 13 present. Quorum's present. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the minutes of the last Common Council meeting be approved and at the same stand as presented on the record. Thank you. Moved and seconded that the minutes of the previous Council meeting stand approved. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Betty, would you lead us in a pledge this evening, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, we have one hearing this evening. And that's rezoning property located at 1221 Sinclair Avenue. Any interested parties wishing to be heard? Any interested parties wishing to be heard? Alderman Warner. I thank you, Your Honor. I move the hearing be closed. We move to a second that hearing be closed under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. The, the second hearing will be on a later agenda. The documents are in finance and they will be coming out, I believe, probably for the next meeting. So then we'll have a public hearing on that. Resignation, Steve. <clears throat> this is a letter to the mayor uh, dated November 25th, 2003 from Paula Felkner, chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, advising that Don Merschberger, member of the Zoning Board of Appeals, has tendered his resignation due to a move out of the city limits. And uh, she's got some recommendations as far as uh, moving alternate members around. Signed by Ms. Felkner. Okay, that can be accepted in the file. Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Richard Lindy to be considered for the Board of Appeals to fill the unexpired term of Donald Merschberger, which expires April 30, 2004. Further recommend that first alternate member, Mark Winkle, be moved to full membership, and the second alternate member, Brian Versi, be moved to first alternate. Richard Lindy will serve as second alternate. Signed by the mayor. That will lay over. And uh, Jason Borden be considered for the Citizens Advisory Committee on Community Development to fill the unexpired term of Sean Severson, which expires April 30, 2004. Signed by the mayor. And that will lay over. Public forum, Pat. Renee Sousa, excuse me, Susha. Thank you. Since only one elder person was able to attend the special audit committee meetings investigating the ethics complaint, I felt compelled to speak tonight to share some of my observations with you. Um, as you know, this council passed a resolution last May stating that the city should enter into a contract with Quarles and Brady not to exceed $120,000. The Special Audit Committee concluded that the $120,000 amount was not a firm cap. They are trying to say it was the amount left over from a previous resolution that you passed to appropriate funds for professional services relating to the project, such as the design of the building, the pedestrian bridge, previous work that the DNR had completed, and $50,000 for legal fees. It is my opinion that there is some fuzzy math going on here. 
I suggest that someone recalculate these numbers. Now, I'm not an accountant or a lawyer, but my addition and subtractions leaves the amount left over from the previous resolution much higher than the $120,000. But the more important part of the May resolution is about the contract. The question that the Special Audit Committee and the District Attorney never addressed is, where is the signed contract? Without a signed contract, there is a problem here. How do you expect the finance director to pay the bill? According to the state statute, no contract is valid until it is countersigned by the finance director. He cannot countersign the contract until the mayor signs it first. Again, it is my opinion, but it appears that the finance director is being set up to be the scapegoat for this entire situation. My second observation has to do with this investigative committee trying to tie financial gain to the situation. The audit committee didn't have the depth of knowledge necessary to bark up this tree. But since they brought it up, there is a lingering half million dollars in room tax out there that is unaccounted for in 2005. And until the missing money is accounted for, you cannot rule out personal gain. I wonder why the special audit committee wouldn't let the proxy for one of the people who signed the complaint speak. The chairman would not even allow his written statement to be read out loud for the record. Was the voice of this person squelched because he is one of the former city attorneys and he might have the knowledge and proof that what happened here was both unethical and illegal? It was generous, however, for the committee to allow the other person who signed the letter to speak. During the questioning of this person, someone's hidden agenda was definitely exposed. This was supposed to be an investigation into the misconduct of some city officials. But the first three questions that the chairman asked Marge Sigali were, who are the members of the Sheboygan Citizen Action Group? Are there any aldermen in your group? And how many members are in your group? The last two questions that she was asked were, who are the officers of your group and who runs your meetings? These questions have nothing to do with the ethics complaint. But since the audit committee, and I'm sure some people in this room are so curious about this action group, why don't you come to the next meeting? The meetings are open to the public. Everyone is welcome, including the aldermen. The next meeting will be Wednesday, February 18th at 7 o'clock. The address is 1427 North 10th Street. We meet in the lower level of the old St. Nicholas Hospital building. You're all welcome to come. Looking into the future, I hope to see things handled better. After looking at how Blue Harbor was pushed through, I hope aldermen ask more clarifying questions and are brave enough to amend resolutions if necessary to make them crystal clear. For example, tonight you're going to approve a $3.1 million water reservoir. To my knowledge, it has nothing to do with the installation of a new water intake pipe. Hypothetically speaking, if there's an investigation down the road into the installation of a $6 million water pipe, will there be an investigative committee that concludes that your innocent actions tonight authorizing the new holding tanks actually improve the ins approve the installation of the new water intake pipe? Okay, we'll have Joe. Uh, Joe Trublitz here when we get to that document. I believe he's here. He can clarify that. It has nothing to do with the water pipe. Okay. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. On the consent agenda, I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file. All RCs be accepted and adopted and all resolutions, substitute resolutions and ordinances be passed. Moved and seconded that all ROs be accepted and filed, all RCs be accepted and adopted, resolutions and substitute ordinance be put upon their passage. Under discussion, all the no right Thank all you, Your Honor. Uh, regarding document 2211, yes. I don't need a separate vote on that, but I would just like an explanation regarding uh, the benefits uh, to the city and to the project uh, of passing such okay. uh, rule. Thank you. I'll open the floor to Tom's here. Tom, Tom's here for speaking on yeah. uh, Could I have a motion to open the floor, please? So move. Tom Schaefer. Oh, so Tom Seether, I'm sorry. Tom who, who's making the motion? Okay. And a second? Who second? Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Tom, please step up to the mic. I'm uh, Tom Seether, Director of Development for the Great Lakes Companies. Uh, if you could uh, ask the qu any question you want to answer, and I'll do my best to I, I, I answer it for you. Just a clarification of. Uh, changing the agreement, what's the benefits both to the project, why is this change necessary, okay. and the benefit to the city? Um, by way of background, when we were negotiating the development agreement months ago with the city, 
Um, our plan for developing the Blue Harbor condominiums was to be able to begin sales on those uh, very shortly after the resort started construction. And we anticipated that the sales process would take quite a while. And under that scenario, we, we did some pro forma work and concluded, well, boy, we probably won't ever have more than half the condominiums, plus or minus, under construction at any given time. And what happened is through, through some, some delays in our paperwork, delays in legal work, we actually weren't able to start marketing the condominiums until I believe it was October rather than June or July. Um, so the bad news was we got a late start. Um, with consent of, of this body here, we were able to get our foundations in before the winter really got hard, and that was very helpful. The good news has been that the pace of sales has gone much better than we actually anticipated, and has led to a point where for us to be able to deliver uh, the units um, during the course of the summer, they'll actually all be under construction at the same time. So we'll actually have more capital being invested in the property at any one given time than we originally anticipated. Um, what we're looking at right now is if we're able to keep moving on the clip that we're moving on right now, we anticipate having the first buildings delivered um, probably right around the 1st of June, uh, the last units in the middle of July. If we were forced to stay within the, the somewhat arbitrary cap that was originally put in place, uh, a number of the units wouldn't be completed until the summer's been passed and the PGA has been passed. And clearly, uh, the resort, investors in the resort, purchasers of the units would like to be able to capture some of that summer income. So that's really why we're here asking for a modification. Tom, where are you at with the sale? Do you have a number tonight with you? You know, I was not able to track down uh, Dave Shively, Director of Sales, today, but I got an email from him as of Friday. We had uh, 73 deposits down for 64 units. Um, those were, you know, refundable deposits. And I believe 39 non-refundable 7% real estate sales contracts executed with deposits. So to the best of my knowledge, in the communique I got from Dave is we're, we're past halfway. And they're coming in pretty quickly. We've had a lot of interest. Good, Good to hear. Any? Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, may I address the Yes. Just, just a question, uh, and it's a very simple question, and I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not really into the subordination and, and so forth. Is there any risk to the city uh, at all by increasing the subordination amount? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably the best guy to answer that and tell you the truth. Uh, I, know, I know that... You know, if, if there's more money subordinated, then, then that has to have an element of risk to it, I would think. But you also have more capital being invested and more. So I, I, I don't know that I can really answer that. Uh, Steve may even have a better idea than I do. Hold on. Whereas that's, that's really the, uh, the two sides of the coin. Um, you know, there is. What, what you're agreeing to when you're subordinate is you're saying you'll step behind the rights of the first mortgage lender uh, uh, in the event that there's a default and in the event that the first mortgage lender doesn't get paid, that the money is loaning out. Uh, here, it's not a matter of whether or not to grant a subordination. It's whether to increase the existing level, which is $10,500,000, uh, to roughly $16 million. Uh, so it's a matter of degree, I guess. You're, you're farther behind uh, if there's a default. Uh, as Tom mentions, the good news, the flip side of that, is that uh, it's an indication that a lender is willing to lend $16 million uh, for the condominium portion of the project, and you're going to get the condominiums built faster and therefore on the tax rolls sooner than if the, uh, the lender wasn't able to lend a full $10.5 million or, or $16 million uh, up front. Uh, and uh, I don't believe that the lender, m and Bank, will uh, close the second part of the loan unless we agree to subordinate to that full amount of their, their lending. Uh, you know, they have, we have closed on the first phase, the first 32 units, and uh, their loan was $8.6 million, so we're subordinate to that amount right now. Uh, 
uh, however, they didn't close and they didn't lend the money until there were commitment from Great Lakes to have 24 hard sales to, uh, uh, for the bank to loan Great Lakes enough to build 32 units. And they're going to do the same thing on the second phase. Uh, they would only lend based on, again, having 24 sales for, for 32 units, the final 32. So uh, that's the risk that you're farther behind, I guess, uh, the m and loan, but on the plus side, you got the development faster. Um, uh, you get the tax base faster. You get the project done, yeah, totally done. And it's, it's amazing to me that Great Lakes has been able to sell that many condominium units for the prices that they're asking in the time that they, they have done. I, th I think one positive, too, from a collateral standpoint is that um, the cost of developing the project is somewhat front-end loaded because you have infrastructure, you have to bring in engineering costs, fill, streets, architecture fees. So actually, the first half of the units cost less than the second half of the units. So on, on a terms of a subordination per unit, I believe that the city would have less risk exposure by having more units built, I believe. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's one other thing that the condominiums are, you know, 16 separate buildings as opposed to the hotel that's one building that were it to, uh, you know, with the condominiums, uh, as far as you're not likely to have a mass catastrophe with all 16 units that are sort of segregated uh, or problems with all 16 like you would with one large hotel or something like that. So the the chance of uh, there being some deficiency in property value or something like that on the whole condominium project would be um, at, at least theoretically less likely to happen. The value would still be there if something happened to one or two of them or there was a default as to one or two of them or they didn't sell or something like that. But, um, I don't know, I guess that's about all the comments I have unless there's other questions. Alan Murray, I you have a follow-up question. Follow-up. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the risk really is, though, between now and in the construction phase and when they're sold. When they're sold, the risk is then on the owner of the condo's shoulders. Is that correct? So really, we're expanding our risk up until the point that they're sold to the buyer. Right. And as Mr. Sather has indicated, the sales are, are there. Now, uh, they've got you know, non-refundable deposits, does that mean that somebody couldn't walk away? No, somebody, buyer could walk away. I guess it's encouraging to hear that they've got, in effect, a waiting list of more people that are interested in the units than there are actual units. So that if some people, for whatever reason, chose to uh, forfeit their refundable deposit and not buy, that there may be other people there waiting in the wings. So, you know, so the likelihood of a lot of unsold units is probably pretty slim. Alderman Warner. I think our, I guess, thank you, Tom, for your explanation and Steve for yours. Uh, I, th I just think it's a great sign that the condominium project and the Blue Harbor Resort itself uh, is going according to plan and things are working off very well there. I think it certainly indicates that there's interest in, in the entire project out there and uh, I'm glad to see things going well. So hopefully we keep moving along. Well, and just on a more personal matter, you know, for us, is we've uh, been trying to deliver on as many of our promises as we can. I mean, we're trying very hard to make this project work as best we can. And it, just on a personal matter, it's important for us to get these delivered as quick as we can and get them up and get them generating revenue for the city and for the resort and for our investors. And, and just to show that positive momentum, that there's a lot of interest in this project, this is someplace worth coming. And it's, it's a little, a little more... You know, less pecuniary, but it, it matters to us. Hello, Manny. Question? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, question and a comment. How much is the non-refundable deposit? Uh, they would be averaging over $20,000. Okay. And uh, the question then is that um, I called and inquired to get some information about the project uh, and the condos as investment vehicles. And there were 57 spoken for about 10 days ago. 
uh, the number is now 73. That's my understanding. 10 days, that's the difference. There's no other discussion. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Pat, would you call the roll? This will be for the whole, whole, con thing. whole consent agenda. Right. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. Thank you for coming up. Thank Have you. a safe trip back. Thank you. Okay, 2222 through 2225 to be referred in Alderman Bauman. You would like to make correction? Yes, I would, Your Honor. Uh, 23, 24, and 25, I would all just like to have referred to public works instead of public protection and safety, please. Okay. Don't need that. That's fine. Okay. 23, yeah, 23. 2226, we will hold for 2234, Alderman Winninger. Thank you, Your Honor. She's I would like soon. to take 2226 and no. 2234. Okay, hang, hang a on a minute. Okay, okay, hang on a minute until we get to 34 and then we'll take them together, okay? Okay? okay. So, I'll get back to you. Yes. Hang on a minute. 2227 through 33 to be referred. Yeah. Alderman Bowman. One more time, please. Um, document number 2228, I'd also like to have referred to public works instead of public protection and safety, and 2231 to public works instead of public protection and safety. Okay. <laughs> Alderman Moody. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, why is 2229 going to public works? Isn't that a plan commission type document? I believe, why is it going to, why, why is it going is it to public, going works? public works? He has been dealing with the encroachment on that and public okay. work, works been working with them on that, yeah, uh, Betty. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. And setbacks and stuff. All right. Okay. Okay, now we got that clear. Now we'll go to Ingrid. 2234 along with 2226, authorizing into a contract for the 2004 Bond Council Services. Alderman Winninger. I make a motion suspension of the rules. We have suspension of the rules. Is there any objections? Hearing none, would you proceed, please? I make a motion to file the RO 2226 and pass the resolution 2234. Been moved and second to accept and file the RO 2226 and pass the resolution 2234 under discussion. Hearing none, oh, Alderman Reinflesch. Oh, just a quick question. Um, who, did, who was providing the bond council services last year? Is it the same firm? Uh, was it was that a Quarles? new new thing. It was Quarles and Brady. That. It was had been fully enlarged for Lardner. several years. Right. Uh, last year it was Quarles as part of the Blue Harbor mm -hmm. project, uh, and uh, Rich. Rich got some quotes from from both firms, and maybe you can address this, but the quarrels uh, was lower, almost uh, half as far as their charge. Uh, I know that wasn't the recommendation of the finance director would have preferred, to, I guess, to stay with Foley and Lardner, but uh, the dollar amount spoke in favor of quarrels. Okay. There's no discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Bonet. Aye. Doyle. Aye. Manny. Aye. Moody. Aye. Perez. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Warner. Aye. Weininger. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 2235 by Alderman Groff, authorized retaining outside legal counsel to represent the city in the matter of Gary Van Ness versus BR Associates. Alderman Winninger. I make a motion suspension of the rules. Second. We have a request for suspension of rules. Under, is there any objections? Hearing none, would you proceed? I make a motion the resolution be put upon its passage. 
Second. Moved and seconded a resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfeich? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonnet? Aye. 13 ayes. <coughs> Motion to carry 2236 by Alderman Groff, authorized the issuance and sale up to 3,152,000 water system revenue bonds, series 2004, and providing for other details and covenants with respect thereto. Of. thereto. Alderman Winninger. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to resolution be put up on this passage. Sorry. Moved and seconded a resolution be put upon this passage under discussion. There was discussion earlier on that. Uh, Joe, you want to explain that? The $3 million for the water system revenue bonds, please? Where did she ever get that idea? It was for the intake pipes. It doesn't go that fast. Thank you. I'm Joe Trueblood, the water utility superintendent. Uh, the project at hand has been in planning for about two years. And what we're actually adding is a coagulation, flocculation, sedimentation facility we affectionately refer to as CFS. And this is a facility uh, similar to treatment process we already have at the plant. We simply need to uh, add more structure. The structure we're currently using was constructed in 1929, in 1939, and some in 1959. Um, this project is being funded by a safe drinking water loan uh, the, the bonds are underlaying the loan uh, from the state and uh, council did approve the uh, authorize the water utility to accept the loan about nine months ago and the matter at hand now is is the final detailed uh, bond resolution um, this project has nothing to do with the intake icing or, or any of that matter whatsoever and Joe this is part of the planning that you're planning in the stages to upgrade the system over the next five years or so? Yes, in order to qualify for funding, this uh, project was evaluated by the DNR and it, it uh, ranked a number th uh, three out of 26 for funding this year. Uh, the DNR does a priority scoring based on the effect on water quality and the need for the project. Again, uh, it has, just, not, they don't again, it has nothing to do with the freezing of the pipes, you said? Uh, nothing to do with freezing of okay. intakes. Thank you. Any other questions? Call the roll, please. Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfeich? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonnet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 2237 will lie over. 2238 through 40 to be referred. 2120 by the City Plan Commission, recommending amending the zoning of property at 1221 Sinclair Avenue. Alderman Warner. Moved and second that we accept and file our O and the ordinance be put upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, this is relative to rezoning property located at 1221 Sinclair Avenue from UR, which is urban residential, to UR. This property has been purchased by the Rehabilitation Center of Detroit, and the property is currently vacant and in poor condition. The Rehabilitation Center expects the latest development to turn into a parking lot for its employees in the office building directly to the west of it. Uh, this will help with some of the parking issues in the neighborhood as well. And uh, if, if someone aware, they will work on the ground and pass through several times so that the parking will become a public protection safety for some of the parking on the street. This will help with some of those problems. And I will also mention that the neighbors are around within 100 feet, all of them were informed of the reporting of this property. So, they were quite a bit of a false comment. We do not have anyone come to the plant to the future, but I'm going to Another discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonnet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. Resolution by Alderman Winninger. Manny Perez accepting addendum to the 2003-2004 contract with 
IAFF Local 483 Firefighters. Winninger. Winninger. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion the resolution will be put up on its passage. Second. Moved and seconded. The resolution be put up on its passage. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll? Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Van Ankeren? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wongerman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. Resolution 2129, resolution by Alderman Groff, Stefan, Doyle, and Bonet, authorizing transfer of funds for pledge contributions to the Mead Public Library Foundation for the third floor expansion project. Alderman Winninger. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion the resolution be put up on its passage. You want to take the next one too, yeah. Ingrid? And um, take 2130. Yes. Resolution 253-03-04. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion on 2129 or 2130? Hearing none, would you call the roll? Rinfleisch? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wongerman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 2135. General Ordinance by Alderman Winninger, Manny, and Perez, amending ordinance which adopted the revised City of Sheboygan Compensation Program for non-represented employees so as to correct the amount of contribution for 2004. Winninger. Alderman Winninger. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to general ordinance be put up on its passage. Move to the second ordinance be put up on its passage. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll? Van Akron? Aye. Vanderwil? Aye. Wongerman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Manny? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 2241 will lie over. 2242 will go to finance. 2243, public protection and safety. 2244 will lie over. Steve? Twenty two forty five is communication from Kurt Jagler relative to the proposed year round opposite parking. Public works. Twenty two forty six is a communication from Gary Messick relative to the proposed year round opposite parking. Public works. 2247 is a communication from Tom Ross relative to the proposed year-round opposite parking. Public Works. 2248 is a communication from Betty McGinnis relative to her observations of problems between various older persons. Harassment Committee. Public. Oh. 2248. Harassment Committee. It was requested. To go there. Harassment Committee. That's a special harassment committee. Nobody told me. Okay. Sorry about that. That special harassment committee they investigated, then will come back to, to go to ethics board. Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> okay. 2249 is communication from Joe Sheehan and Al Calabrisa of the Sheboygan Area School District relative to the police liaison program. It goes public protection and safety. 2250 is a communication from Steve Jacobson, president of the Festival of Trees, relative to the use of the Sheboygan Armory. Oh, it works. 2251 is a communication from Midwest Communications, Inc., requesting permission to hold their return to the beach 4th of July volleyball tournament. Public works. 2252 is a resolution authorizing entering into a contract change order for providing and placing clay soils as directed on areas of the South Pier District and providing and placing six inches of topsoil in areas of the South Pier District, bid number 2265. And that, that was the good public works. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Alderman Warner, hang, hang on a minute. Alderman Warner, you had your light on. Yeah, I just want to remind everybody on the council that there is a committee, the whole meeting this coming Wednesday, February 18th at 6 p.m. in the council chambers. And it's going to be a training session on the city of Sheboygan's ethics code. The instructor will be Carl Beesing, the uh, Sheboygan County Corporation Council. Okay. Move in a second to adjourn. One question just to clarify that. Mike, 
Correction, the Harassment Committee. I would say it's all the Ethics Committee. You would rather, rather Ethics Committee because I was requested. I okay, then it'll go to Ethics Committee, just to make sure. It was requested to go to the other one, but that's fine. Ethics Committee. Ethics Board, excuse me. Ethics Board. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? 